Hi guys. I just got done selling some stuff from my farm. I'm here to talk about actually how much money my farm is making now. Hi. My my farm account is due at Okay, that's no problem. What is um what's the total amount on that? Alright, uh no problem. I think I should have what I need to cover it. I will be up there to to get that taken care of in just a second. Okay, thank you very much. I'll talk to you later. Bye. Um, anyways, I am here to talk about the money that I've made on my farm this year in my first year. Hello. Yes, local co-op. That's that's me. Okay. What did what did we buy again? Cuz my animals pretty much just eat grass and I don't really buy a lot of feed. What was that for? Oh, that's right. Okay. That's that, you know, that's fine. I do remember that now. Thank you. All right, I will be up there to get that paid in just a little bit. Okay, perfect. All right. Hey guys, I am here to talk about how much money I have made on the farm this year. My profits versus costs versus rev. Hi. Yeah. Farmer Nate does not want to work for free anymore. Well, you can tell him that I do not appreciate that attitude and that he is fired. All right? Okay, bye. Still have $20. <laughs> so, anyways, um, I'm just going to get to it. I have a seven-year plan. Hi, vet clinic. I know. Yes, I... Yeah. I know, I remember that. You really saved its life and it, it really helped me a lot. I guess the bill is due on that, right? <laughs> How much is that bill again? Okay, well, uh, maybe we can talk ab about a, a payment plan. All right, guys, yes, I'm about to give you a full look at my expenses for 2021, which was a startup year. And that means I spent about 10 times more cash than I actually made in this first year. Well, I did not go into debt for this. It was pretty much all of the monies I had in my pocket. But despite that, I am extremely optimistic about what I found when I ran my profit analysis for year number one. All of the data is here that I need to do that. I have had one full year of expenses and then I have data on my first livestock sale. Granted, the scale I'm working on is so small. I'm working on a micro scale. In fact, I only had 16 productive ewes in lambing 2021. But profitability in business really has little to do with the size or scale you are working on. In fact, if you can nail down profitability and cut your losses on a small scale, you will be profitable on a large scale. And then, conversely, if you are bleeding to death on a small scale, there's no sense in imagining that you will not also bleed to death on a large scale. So I'm getting ready to flip over to some data. And I have run this profit analysis in a four step process, guys. And I've created a worksheet for you to do the exact same thing for yourself. Before I delve into all of the pie charts that are specific to my operation, I wanna give some context for people who may not be entirely familiar with my story. And to be honest, there was a point that I've never have really covered in detail. I talk a lot about using existing resources to launch my farm, and I've been blessed with some incredible resources. However, on February 6th of 2021, I took my personal farming journey from passive to pretty aggressive. On February 6th, I realized that I really needed to fish or cut bait with my goals in being a regenerative farmer for profit. At that point in time, I had been running grazing management for six months on the flock, and I realized that their well-being was really closely tied to my grazing. At about the same time, I realized that I may have a faster track to profitability as a shepherdess 
than I would have as a cowgirl, which I initially thought I was going to run beef cattle and sell grass-fed beef for profit. But sheep really became evident that those were going to be more profitable for me and gave me a lot more flexibility with respect to how I could sell them. This all again culminated February 6th when I said to myself, well, I'll just roll the tape from February 6th. I need to own them to run full force with it. <laughs> so I prayed about this decision because it was kind of life altering and I moved forward with a buyout offer to my family for the entire flock, which was 25 ewes and a ram. The offer also included the cost of the perimeter fencing, the sheep specific perimeter fencing that my family had just finished installing. While I could have just bought the sheep, to be honest, I can't run sheep without the fencing and the fencing is useless to my family without the sheep. And really, I wanted to do that because to cover the cost of the fencing really gives a more realistic picture investment wise of what I'd be looking at if I did not have so many existing resources at hand. So there is some perspective for you and that is really one of the reasons why I am going so hard and heavy at this work because I am in with both feet and to make it work without some serious losses it's going to require some serious focus. My overall goal is to run 80 breeding use and that is where I really need to be stock wise to generate the income that one person needs to make a living at farming in the way that I am doing it. Okay, so let's get to it. Four steps to determining profitability in your operation. And the first step is this. Take all of the expenses to date and put them on one big spreadsheet and then split those expenses into major categories. So my seven categories were number one, farm infrastructure. And the farm infrastructure accounted for 50.4% of overall costs to date, which includes things like the compensation for the sheep specific fencing, the infrastructure required to run my rotational grazing system, which is electric fencing, a DIY sheep shoot that me and my farm hand put together. It was mostly him. I bought a sheep trailer and then portable troughs to feed supplement in paddocks over winter and so forth. Major category number two is the cost of my livestock. This cost includes the 25 ewes that I initially bought, the ram that came with them, and then it includes the cost of sourcing a new registered ram for the flock. Costs include travel. I traveled quite a lot to find what I wanted on that front. And then also included in here is the price of just a very small set of registered ewes to begin that second flock. And then this also includes the cost of my personal membership in the Dorper Sheep Breeders Society. So that is 40.4% of total costs to date. Those first two categories amount to 90.8% of what I have spent so far. Third on the list of seven is animal health, and that accounts for 4.7% of total expenses to date. Animal health includes things like hoof trimming supplies, lambing kit items, items to keep the ewes healthy and the lambs healthy during lambing time. This includes things like dewormers, a setup to do fecal egg counts at home, and mineral boosters for any ewe that just might need a little boost of vitamins or something and etc. But that's generally the animal health category right there. And that was, again, 4.7% of costs to date. Overwintering was 1.8% of costs to date. And this includes hay, protein supplementation, and minerals for those winter months. 1.1% of costs to date is year-round feed supplementation, which is just a mineral on pasture, and sometimes I will put out a protein tub. 0.8% of costs to date are grazing management books and educational items along those lines. I'll include a link to a video I created on my favorite books for those who are going to ask. Check it out down below. 0.7% of overall costs is marketing, and this would have been probably a lot more if I was not a marketer already. But basically what I spent money on was 
website hosting for shepherdessdorpers.com and I did all the rest of the work myself. Okay, so my step two was I removed the cost of appreciating assets from my list. And I'm gonna put forth two terms here really quick. There's appreciating assets and depreciating assets. Appreciating assets are things like livestock, which only increase as, as long as they don't get attacked by predators or disease. So I removed the cost of appreciating assets from my overall operational costs. And if a ewe dies or is cold and there was not a replacement for her in the lambing season in that same year, that is when I will count the cost of the animal in my expenses category. But not until the ewe is cold, sold, or dies will I figure out how to address that cost. And that cost will just come straight as a cost for that year unless she was replaced by an offspring. But depreciating assets are ones that will need to be replaced over time. Those are things in the farm infrastructure category like fencing and materials and equipment. While they won't need to be replaced for several years, they will at some point need to be replaced. What I did in step three is this. I divided the cost of all of my depreciable assets by the total length of my business plan. And my business plan is seven years. So I took that one big hunk, that huge cost, of farm infrastructure and I divided it by seven to get the actual cost of that farm infrastructure for 2021. And here after step three we have a very good picture of my costs in this year. This is a very even spread and a very accurate look at what I spent my money on in 2021. It comes to 43% farm infrastructure cost of my livestock was nothing because I had plenty of replacements and, praise the Lord, very little mortality on pasture. Animal health amounted to 29%. Overwintering was 11% of costs for this year. Feed supplement was 6.7% of costs for this year. Books and education were 4.9%. And marketing was 4.4%. Alright, so step four. And this is sort of a livestock specific thing because, again, we're dealing with unappreciating asset. We're dealing with animals that have offspring and if they're sheep they have a lot of offspring pretty fast. But I acknowledged the value of that offspring as a reinvested capital gain. And that's kind of a creative uh, label on my front, but I see my ewe lambs as a capital gain. But this year, because I'm building towards that 80 ewe lamb number, I'm keeping all of my replacement ewes. So instead of trading that product for cash, I am just reinvesting it straight into my operation. But nevertheless, I want to acknowledge those gains because those are gains that I worked for. Those are gains that actually reflect what farming is. So this was a net increase of seven ewes in my flock. And so what I did was I took the costs and I took the overall revenues, which was the cash from my livestock sales, you'll see in dark green, and the reinvested capital gains, which are my ewe lambs that I put straight back into my operation. And guys, I was so encouraged because with all of this, my operation had revenues that exceeded costs by 36% in 2020. 21. Now I have to stick it out in order for these numbers to be accurate, but these numbers are encouraging and a lot of the expenses in categories such as overwintering and animal health, I was learning and I was buying things that I probably didn't need and probably won't ever use again. So I will be able to trim the fat on those expense categories as well as refine my sales channels for maximum profitability in the coming year. But overall, year number one with a 36% revenue over cost is pretty significant. So guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you followed along with your own worksheet. If you want some more marketing information, I have a video called The Four Original Principles of Marketing. They are the four principles you need to latch hold on if you are thinking about farming for profit. And then also, if you have not watched it yet, go back to one of the very first videos on this channel for the $100,000 farm business plan that I created. 
Keep watching, guys, and thank you so much for being here. I look forward to seeing you in the next video.